Hello everybody, and welcome back to another FS19 DLC review video. Now, if you guys remember this map, it is because this is my If I series map, where we did challenges, and if I failed the challenges, we would end the video or do other wacky things. Um, but yeah, I think this is the perfect map to check out the new uh, Precision Farming add-on. If you guys want to see my first thoughts and feelings about it, uh, you guys can go check out my video on Erlengrot. That was where I kind of got a first impression for it. I hadn't seen anything before it, so I was kind of just winging it. But today we're actually going to look at it and figure out how, you know, to, the, to best do the things. So the first thing probably I should have done on Erlengrot but didn't is look at the help menu. Because it definitely helps a lot. If we go down from farming basics to advanced knowledge to animals forestry to production recap to precision farming there you go all the way at the bottom precision farming so precision farming this precision farming mod adds more realism and aspects of real farming into farming simulator the main focus is on different soil types which influence the growth of crops this mod adds an overview map which is dedicated to new more detailed information about the soil and specific spots on the map this map can be accessed via the tab next to the world map in the menu very cool so, soil types. Let's learn about the soil types. This mod divides the ground into four types of soil. Each individual soil type has its own characteristic, which influences the crop growth and ultimately the yield amount. Therefore, every soil type needs a special treatment to get the maximum yield from the field. So, every soil type will be a little bit different. As you can see, this is Felsbrim right here. So, yeah, we have, you know, the loam. As you can see, there's like a vein of loam right here. And it kind of goes in veins, so as you can see, there's like a big loamy sand kind of wave right here, which is very interesting. But as you can see, in our two fields that we really care about, we got loamy sand, sandy loam, and loam. To determine the soil t which soil type you have, you use the Asaria Scout, and then you send it off to the laboratory for analysis. It shows it on the gator, but you can put it on literally any tractor with a three-point hitch. It's really fine. Yep, take numerous soil samples so the field is fully covered in dark red on the soil map. This color indicates where samples have already been taken. After that, you can send the samples to the laboratory. A few minutes later, you see the results on the soil map. Additionally, you can also see the pH and nitrogen map. So let's talk about the pH values. So next to the soil map, you can find the pH value map. This indicates the acidity or, bi or basis basicity of the soil. The pH should always be in the optimal target range depending on the soil type. The target pH for the soil type would be loamy sand would need 6.0, sandy loam 6.5, loam 6.75, and filthy clay being the highest at 7.0. pH can be increased by lambing the field. This is recommended every third harvest. By default, the lime spreader automatically adjusts the application rate to the, to the rate required to reach optimal pH target level, but there's also an option to control it manually. So this is what I did not figure out on the Erlengrot video. I didn't know you can control... Um, you can adjust the application rate. Had no idea you could do that. The pH value is not at optimal level. The yield decreases. Depending on the soil type, the pH level decreases after every harvest. Excuse me. But yeah, very interesting. Definitely a lot more realism. And then we also have the nitrogen level, which is basically your fertilization. So the pH replaces your lime. You're going to have to make sure you know the pH. And the nitrogen is a fertilizer. Next to the pH map, you can find the nitrogen map. This indicates the current level of nitrogen in the ground. The optimal level of nitrogen depends on the planted crop and the soil type. By walking on the field and having a look into the field display, you can see the current target nitrogen levels of a specific spot on the field. So as you can see, this field's not looking too good. It's red, but after you spread some slurry or manure or fertilizer, you can make it nice and green right here. So yeah. Sorry, manure will increase the nitrogen level by a fixed amount, uh, depending on the soil type. It is recommended to do this before preparing the field for the next selling. Obviously, you don't want to spread manure on growing crops. Mineral and liquid fertilizer adjust the nitrogen level automatically to the crop requirements. If the crop is already planted, this should be done within the first growth stages after selling the crop. It is always possible to control the application rate manually. So again, another thing I didn't really know about controlling the application rate manually. But yeah, still very, very interesting. Then we have the yield map. In the yield map, you can see the yield and specific pots on the field. This can be used to analyze the field afterwards. 
So you can see that, okay, so, you know, these fields have pretty good yields. Yield up here isn't the greatest. And yeah, it's very realistic, because I know in real life, obviously, your whole field isn't going to have the same amount of yield. You're going to have little spotches that aren't going to have, you know, as much yield as others. And yeah, economic analysis. To get the economic analysis of each field, you click the type. The field percentage page just open a window list the cost, earnings, and total balance of the field. You can either view the totals of the value field. Press a chance. Track data over mo Okay, so this is like a, a, a... So I didn't know about this either. And the RTK station. These are two buildings at the shop which have an RTK antenna on top. The antenna provides better GPS signal for helpers. As long as one of the buildings fits on the map, the accuracy of helpers is increased, and they work up to 11% faster than before. Okay, so they, they improved helpers, but you have to have a... RTK station. Okay. <laughs> cool. They could have noticed they helpers better. They had to add a the thing to make them better. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and run some samples on this field. I know that was probably a lot to take in, but there's just so a lot to take in that it's already nighttime. I'm gonna go to sleep. Okay, here we are at the store. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of the stuff they were talking about um, during that help menu. If you guys didn't quite understand the help menu, don't worry. I'll be going over it in a little bit more detail. That's what this video is all about. But yeah, definitely that help menu. It's definitely a lot more, how can I say, useful than not reading it, like I did on Ellen Grant. Anyway, so now that we know a bit more about how this works, let's go ahead and get a, a scout right here. We can go ahead and buy it for $17,000. Pretty pricey. And then if we go over here to buildings, you can get one of those RTK buildings they were talking about and see how much that improves workers. Here we go. Building with RTK base station. Shed with RTK base station. Here's our land. Let's go and put this over here. So we got to see how that works. <laughs> we have $693. I probably have to take out a bit of a loan. Um, because, yeah. Okay. We got it. So here it is. I haven't seen it yet. This is what it looks like. The Assyria Scout. You got your little dishes right here that the soil goes into and it's got like a a thing that goes in and takes the soil puts them in the little kind of containers and then you can send it off to the lab stinking drivers i guess i should have my headlights on and my beacons that works so i got let's head over here one unfortunate thing is we can only test one of our fields as this field actually has some canola in it but we can use that field to test out the rtk base station which i had no idea was a new add-on really i mean it's, it's interesting i like how they're how it helps helpers but um yeah it's kind of weird how you have to pay for the helpers to be better you think they would just kind of do a base update to the helpers make them better but i don't know let me know what you guys think about that i'm personally indifferent whatever because I, I mean all you gotta do <laughs> It's just 17000 for a little building that, um, you know, makes helpers faster. I mean, I personally use Courseplay. Courseplay is a great mod. But, you know, for those of you who don't have Courseplay on console, uh, I know it might be good. Because, yeah, it definitely do help. Definitely helpers are definitely a good thing to have. Okay, so you can unfold it. The little thing comes up. And then we can go ahead and start tapping the soil. And as you can see... It fills in the little soil tray, and we just kind of go around in different parts of the field, getting samples. So, yeah. Oh, I accidentally sent them off to the laboratory. We have some soil samples analyzed already. Uh, I accidentally misclicked the wrong button. Oh, whoopsies. But as you can see now, what we've done so far... Is kind of the loam and sandy loam right here, but yeah. Once we get the whole field, we'll get a we'll get a bigger picture for what's going on here. Just try not to hit the wrong button. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, the whole field has been sampled, and also because of the radius, it does sample this field over here. So we will get to see a little bit of this field, but like I said, this field is ready to harvest. So once you're doing that, you go ahead and send it off to the laboratory. We're probably going to go into debt here. <laughs> it's fine, though. It's all good. There you go. I think they were in debt, $207. But as you can see, right down here is where it'll say your soil samples. And yeah, 
Because we're on Felsbrin, it is about the same as what the help menu said. So right here on the help menu, kind of what our fields look like. Yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much the exact same. So every map kind of has the same kind of soil base. So if you know a map, you, you kind of know what soil you have to deal with. Which I think is interesting. It gives you knowledge of the map. And then again, you do want to sample to kind of figure out the nitrogen and pH levels. Which is what we're going to look at next. So we come over here. Go over to the pH. Which is looking alright. So we probably don't need to do any lime. That's, this looks mighty fine. Actually, it's in kind of the 6. Yeah, the 6 area. 6.0. Which is what they said is good for this type of soil. We're not in the 7, but we don't have any salty clay. We have 6.25 6. 6. right here. Yeah, I think that pH level is alright. The nitrogen level could be a little better. So now we're going to go ahead and do um, some fertilizing. So yeah, if your pH level wasn't good, you would spread lime. If your nitrogen level is not good, you do some fertilizer. So we're going to go ahead and get in here. Uh, we don't have any fertilizer. Of course we don't. Why would I have fertilizer on a map that I never play ever again? So as you can see right here in the help menu, which I never even opened on Erlengrot when I was doing my reaction, uh, we have nitrogen mineral fertilizer application. So that's kind of our kind of target. We want to get up to 200 kilograms a hectare of nitrogen, and we can change the application rate of our fertilizer in order to kind of meet that margins. So, I think, again, like I said, I don't quite know too much about it, it is very complicated, but I think this might mean if we can apply more fertilizer, we won't have to do three applications of fertilizer, which is definitely very good. Because yeah, doing three applications of fertilizer, or two, I guess, every time you play the game, or every time you harvest a new field is kind of repetitive, this time you just have to do it once, and just make sure you have it in the margins. Um, at least that's what I'm getting. Um, I could be wrong. But yeah, that's, that's really just kind of, you know, learn how to do it. But hopefully this video kind of teaches you guys how it works. And maybe you want to get this because, yeah, it's interesting. Anyway, let's go ahead and head over to our field. We could also show our application rate if we don't crash into a wall. That would be great, you know? Not crashing into a wall. You turn on the fertilizers. Okay, there we go. Now that we're in the field, as you can see, our little map in the bottom corner, I'm going to go make it bigger. There we go, okay. It says nitrogen, because we have a fertilizer spreader. We're going to go ahead, and we have the application rate set to auto. So let's go ahead and turn on the fertilizer spreader. There we go. And now we're applying, and we're applying quite a bit. Normally, in base game FS19, you wouldn't apply this much fertilizer. Because we have the application rate set to auto, no, yeah, we're applying quite a bit. And as you can see, the nitrogen is going up. So, the nitrogen in the field is going up because of our application. And again, sorry for all the bales in the way. And as you can see, now that we've reached the different type of soil, we've got a bale stuck under us. Um, we're applying a different amount. So we should be able to see where our different soil maps lead just because of the nitrogen map. We should be able to see our different soil types because each soil type needs a different amount of nitrogen. Just like how it needs a different amount of pH. So let's go over here. And let's spread. Get ignore the, <laughs> avoid the bales. <laughs> They're like an obstacle. Yeah, I should really sell these bales. Yeah, no crop detected. See first best result. Apply default value for loamy sand. So that's what we're doing right now. And now we're on Sandy Loam. So yeah, very interesting. I don't see where... Yeah, it seems like this application rate is... I thought it said somewhere where you can ch ch go to manual application rate, but I don't really see that. Yeah, deactivate automatic application rate. So if we were to do that... Hit that. So now we're not automatically applying. And now it's back to kind of the normal FS application rate. But as you can see, look, because we're not applying automatically, we're not doing the best. It's not the best coverage. We're not we're not applying as much as we can. So if we go back to if we revert back to automatic, we're now back to automatic. As you can see, the field's turning green. So yeah, very interesting. 
Like I said, I think this probably makes it so we don't have to actually apply fertilizer multiple times. We just do it once with a lot. And yeah, I think that's it's very similar to real life. Because I don't think in real life you would go over your field at three different stages of growth and apply fertilizer. That's kind of just an FS19 thing. But no, very interesting. And yeah, once we head back over here, um, should... Yeah, get back onto the field and be able to spread. Okay, we're kind of too close to the edge of the field, I think, is the main problem. It's not detecting anything. Okay, there we go. See, so yeah, I'm... That's the thing. You have to make sure you're kind of in the right spot of the field, or else the fertilizer spreader didn't detect anything, and, yeah, we didn't apply anything. But now that we're in the middle, it's going to detect the soil, and there we go. Apply the right amount. So, yeah, very interesting. Still got to avoid... Actually, it's still not applying. Okay, now, that, now it is. Now that we're kind of in the right area. This part of the field seems a little bit iffy. Yeah, this part of the field seems a little iffy. Like it's applying at some points, but not others. So yeah, there's some... There's some stuff going on here. I think... What I'm going to do... Is at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and go to manual control. Let's go on over to... Again, I don't quite know. So this part of the field, as you can see on the map, it's not getting covered in fertilizer. Okay, so now it's saying, now it's saying it's good. So activate automatic application rate, change, okay, no, change application rate with K and M. Okay, I just saw that. Okay, so K, we can up it to 160, and then we go over to here, where the soil wasn't, there we go, recommended 160. Okay, so let's back on up, and then we apply. And that should fix the field, right? Yeah, it's still not showing up anything. So again, <laughs> there's some, there's a little, still a learning curve, but as you can see, the field's mostly done. I don't know what's going on with this piece right here. Maybe this piece is just, I don't know. But yeah, we can't see the yield yet because we don't have any crops in. But as you can see, that's kind of the basics of it. We would plant a crop and then see the, see the yield. I don't know what's going on with this part of the field right here with the nitrogen, but the pH looks good. I wonder if we have to do another sample, but the rest of the field updated just fine. So I don't know. Again, it's very, very interesting. Very interesting, very interesting add-on. So yeah, let's go ahead and I think that's enough for the precision farming. You guys kind of get it. You run your soil samples. You figure out what type of soil you have. You fertilize accordingly. And yeah, I feel like we only have to fertilize once. Again, this is looking a short-term test is what we're doing right here. Really, you kind of need to see it over the long term. So if you guys want to see how this all is going to work out, I would check out. I would recommend checking out my Erlengrot series. We have grass fields, but that should give us a good understanding. And then also my Sandy Bay series, we're probably going to run it on there as well. Because yeah, it's very interesting. It just it takes a while. Because yeah, you got to wait for crops to grow. Whereas yeah, that would take a while to just kind of sit here and wait for crops to grow. Yeah, you guys can check it out for yourself. But that's kind of the basics. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out the the helper base station, and let's see how much it improves the helpers. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I think it's a pretty cool add-on, even though I don't fully understand it yet. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's very, very interesting. Definitely, definitely takes a bit of a learning curve to it. To learn how to do it properly. And for those of you wondering, um, this, this is where all your fertilizer stuff comes in. If you have precision farming installed, you can't no longer check your fertilizer and lime. You have to check it here. Which I think is pretty cool. And like I said, I don't know if this is going to be for the whole field. I don't know if as the crop grows, this is going to deplete and we're going to have to apply more. I'm not too sure about that. Maybe we can just plant... No, let's just plant a tiny little strip of canola. And then maybe we can get a... Maybe if I speed up time a little bit, we can get a feel for... You know what the rest of the field will do. Again, this is just kind of a very rudimentary test. Um, but yeah, I am intrigued on what happens. So once we do plant a crop, normally you do the whole field, but like I said, this is just a simple test. Says the pH value is bad. It is bad for the loam, but for the sandy loam, it is okay. That's interesting. So yeah, we probably would want to do some lime after this harvest. I mean, the pH is not horrible, but definitely would want some lime. After you, you know, if this is a normal game and we would harvest this. Okay, so let's go and put some crop, some canola. 
So there we go. Now that we got some canola in, we should be able to check the map. So I'm going to speed up time a little bit, just so we can kind of see this crop do its thing. The pH value is bad, nitrogen is okay. So I guess while we're all waiting for that, let's go ahead and check out the helpers. Okay, now they, they, they're, they're still forced to go six miles per hour. But maybe they turn around faster. Let's see what he does at the end of the field here. Hopefully he doesn't crash into the RTK base station. Yeah, hopefully he knows how to avoid it. But finally, right here at the end of the field. I put it as close to the field as possible so he could real so he could know what to do. Okay, he's probably not gonna finish here. Yeah, he's gonna. Oh, wait. Okay. This seems pretty pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So I guess they just do their turning a little bit faster. Yeah, usually that, that usually usually that would take a long time. Yeah, they they've already he's already done turning. That's nice. So yeah, definitely worth it. Okay, I'm going right up to there. Bumper to bump the building. <laughs> Very nice. Anyway, let's go and check out our crop. But yeah, as you can see, he turned around a lot faster at the end of the field. That's pretty cool. Okay, how's our canola doing? Oh, here, I won't do some stuff we just planted. Did that deplete the nitrogen? I'm assuming it will, because that just makes sense if the crop eats up the nitrogen. Oh, no, nitrogen is perfect. Right now. Oh, bad right here. So, yeah, having a crop right here. I'm, my character's kind my blinky light's kind of in the way. Oh, no, we missed this piece right here. But, no, it seems like the there's really... Can't quite see the yield yet. Oh, no, wait, right here. Here's the yield. Oh, because we're harvesting. It shows the yield after we've harvested, I guess? I guess that makes sense. You wouldn't quite know the yield until you've harvested. So, yeah, this is pretty bad yield right here. Where Helper E is, this is pretty bad. So, yeah, definitely want to do some stuff with that field. So that kind of helps you know. You know, the yield kind of lets you know, okay, what did we do wrong this year? Let's make it right. So I think that's pretty cool. Definitely a lot of realism, and they did say they're going to add some more to this. I don't think in this game, but maybe in FS21, they're going to expand upon it. Maybe, you know, you adjust the seed application rate, stuff like that. Very cool. You still have weeds to deal with. I don't think they changed anything about weeds. No, weeds are still just, you spray herbicide and kill them. There's no special herbicides you got to use. It's, it's just kind of do with the pH and the, uh, the lime and the fertilizer, which is very interesting. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you understand the, the add-on a little bit better. I'm still kind of understanding it, so sorry if it was a little confusing to follow, as we're basically both learning together. Leave a like if you like, subscribe for new videos, have a- Wait, hold up, we forgot something. Oh, I forgot to check this thing, economic analysis. There, click on the field, there we go. So, that's pretty cool. Soil samples costed $900, mineral fertilizer costed- That's pretty cool. It's like a receipt. Total cost for $3,000 on the field, and then I guess we would get our total to see how- much money we got from the field. Total values, recent, that's pretty cool. And then this field, we're making a profit on it because we didn't spend any money on samples, lime. Well, we did spend a couple, a bit of money on that, but that was before we downloaded this. We spent some money on fuel and yeah. Very interesting, I really like that. So yeah, we're getting some money. Clear yield map on field 20. Clear yield map on field 19. Do we have a yield map on field 19? No, we don't. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. And now it's nighttime. And now it's raining. Yay! Leave a like if you like, subscribe for new videos, have a great ticket rest of your day, and yeah, next time, well, if you guys go hop onto one of my series, you can check out more of this DLC. No, yeah, nitrogen. No, it stays, stays perfectly fine. So yeah, only had to apply the fertilizer once. It's definitely nice not having to worry about fertilizing it after you've already done it once. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Goodbye. Yeah, look, look at the helper go. <laughs>